Today, we're going to be exposing the cold, hard truth about common affiliate marketing myths. Let's get right into it. Myth number one, affiliate marketing is a scam. Keely? Ooh, this is a good one. This is one we get a lot, and I think first we have to answer what is affiliate marketing? Yes. At the end of the day, all it is is a way to earn money online. So what you do as an affiliate is act as a promoter. You're just promoting products and you earn mm -hmm. a percentage of a sale on each product that you promote. So your whole job is just promoting products and then earning money. 100%. This is going to maybe be a weird analogy, but I always go back to door-to-door -door vacuum salesmen <laughs> as like origin of affiliate marketing. Most of the time, these guys don't own the vacuums, right? But they work for a company, they you know sell the vacuum, and if they sell a vacuum successfully, they earn a percent of the sale, right. right? This is just the modern updated version of that online. And when people ask us, oh, is it a scam? Um, one of the first things I go to is absolutely not because the power is still in the hands of the end customer. The customer still gets to decide whether or not they want to purchase the product being offered, right? To your point as an affiliate, what you're really doing is marketing or promoting that product, but you're not scamming anybody out of it because at the end of the day, they have the purchasing power. They still have the ability to choose whether or not they want the product. Right. And something we talk about all the time, too, is to promote um, the problem you solve not the product you have. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of the day, when you're when you're just solving someone's problem, I'm not scamming you into buying something. If you need these these vitamins, I'm not forcing you to buy them. You need them. Yep. I'm solving your problem. That, yep. There's nothing scammy about that. Agree. And yeah, the other thing we get, because um, sometimes people get confused. There are so many different uh, organizational setups out there. So it's like, oh, affiliate marketing, make money online. People sometimes jump to this conclusion of, oh, is it a pyramid scheme mm -hmm. or an MLM thing. Mm -hmm. One of the key differences there is that as an affiliate, you're basically earning commission directly from the product or offer owner, the person who owns the product. Mm -hmm. You're not you know, part of uh, some elaborate structure. You're basically just, if you successfully sell a product, whether it's an ebook or to your point earlier, a supplement, you're getting paid an agreed upon amount of the sale. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's a percent of the sale or what we call rev share. Sometimes it's just a flat rate or CPA, an agreed upon dollar amount for making the sale. And really, like, uh, that's the foundation of the relationship. There aren't a bunch of tiers. You're not necessarily <laughs> trying to recruit more people to do it on your behalf or build your sales army. You're really just acting as an expert marketer online for the product owner. And at the end of the day, too, to that point, I, from personal experience, when I was younger, got roped into some multi-level marketing Ooh. schemes. And they're like, oh, you can earn all this money. You just have to spend $200 on the products right. and then get onboarded onto our platform. And then you start selling these products to other people. And they're really amazing products, but you have to spend X first. Yep. Where with affiliate marketing, you never have to spend a penny. Right. Yeah, you don't need to buy a thousand dollar trunk of makeup <laughs> and foundation and concealer and the eyeshadows or whatever it might be. Right. Um, you, you may have to spend depending on how you choose to promote. But I think to your point, one of the key dis distinctions there is you don't have to spend to buy the product yourself. You don't have to carry inventory. You don't have to house the product or hold it, you know, yourself. You can basically spend your money on the marketing efforts if you choose mm -hmm. to. But that all comes down to how the affiliate chooses to operate. Some people might use organic traffic, like maybe it's a blogger. Um, in which case they've built up an organic audience or maybe it's on social. And some people might choose to go to the paid media route, in which case your spend, what, you know, what you're buying is really the ad space, right. not necessarily the product. Right. We're not selling you on the product. You're just promoting your own product. Yep. And I then the, the one other thing I want to, I guess, emphasize there together is that no, affiliate marketing is definitely not a scam. But I think sometimes it's also talked about like it's really easy. Like, yeah. oh my gosh, you can make money online. Like that. Overnight. Yeah. yeah suddenly you're going to be wealthy beyond your wildest dreams. Yeah. Um, and that may happen in some very rare cases. But, but really looking at it as a job or at least a very committed you know, side hustle, because uh, it does take investment in time and expertise and learning and education and strategy, especially if you're new to the whole thing and you're just figuring out like, what do I want to promote uh, to what you know traffic source or traffic type? How am I going to do all this? It still takes a lot of work. It is, does. I guess what? Yeah, I wanted yeah. to 
it's not an overnight. It's not one of those things we're going to be like, yeah, overnight you can make millions. Right. It takes a lot of hard work, a lot of time, a lot of dedication, and then maybe you can see some money come from it, which is awesome. Yep. And you get better and better at it yeah. and you scale it and you learn more and more about like the types of things you like to promote supplements or eBooks or even different, you know, types or categories within those products. Um, and you get better about figuring out the traffic that that works for and how to do it. And you grow it over time, like anything else. Big things are made of small things. Right. You know? It all snowballs. Mm -hmm. And if it were millions overnight, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> so, okay. But is affiliate marketing a scam? I think end of the day we say no. And that's our first myth, busted. 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 So Chris, another myth about affiliate marketing is that you have to have a pretty big following to earn any money mm. as an affiliate. Yes, myth number two takes a huge following to succeed as an affiliate. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would call this one false too. I would bust this myth. It goes back to what we were just talking about. There are a lot of ways to earn money as an affiliate. Mm -hmm. uh, and some definitely do rely on monetizing your own audience. If you have an owned audience, like let's say you have followers um, on a newsletter or your blog or on a social channel, monetizing that audience by authentically promoting something to them that, that you would want to purchase is definitely a great way to make money online. But to this myth, it's not the only way. Mm -hmm. um, I think we know we see a lot of people uh, who are very successful on ClickBank and in the affiliate marketing space who are actually basically promoting through paid media and paid advertising. So that's an equally viable uh, way to go. And that can be on paid ads on uh, Facebook. YouTube is an increasingly you know, dominant and popular platform. Even um, some people do PPC stuff in the Make Money Online mm -hmm. world, like on Google and you know other search engine merchandising. Mm -hmm. I think, too, it really kind of depends where your... Um uh, promoting at. So for me, in my personal experience, I don't have a huge social media following, but the people that do follow me are very into the niches that I'm promoting. And so if that's similar to you, I'm not, I wouldn't even call myself a nano influencer. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so beyond any of that. But if you have enough of a following of people who are just really into what you're promoting yep. and you're solving a problem for them, you don't have to have a huge following. You just have to have a dedicated one. Yeah. And I think that is a really good point about the quality of traffic in general or of your audience. Like what you're talking about, especially is you have a very meaningful relationship and connection with your audience. So even if it's small, they have developed trust with you. They trust right. what you're going to promote. Um, and provided you maintain that authenticity, they're more likely to follow your advice and, you know, and purchase the product. Um, whereas, yeah, if you're running paid media, you're speaking to a much bigger, you know, set of people mm -hmm. and they're not going to be as warm, so to speak. Like you haven't right. cultivated that personal relationship. Right. Um, you can still promote to them, but the strategy is going to end up being a little bit different because it's a larger sort of colder traffic source that like, you have to warm up and, and still build trust, but in a different way. So, mm -hmm. yeah, both strategies are definitely, you know, viable. Just depends on which one, to your point, you choose. Right. And if you are a content creator trying to create organic content and promote through organic content, again, it's just you don't have to have the world's largest following. Yep. But if you're solving their problem, mm -hmm. that's... That's all you need to do, you know? Yep. You don't have to be Kim Kardashian. <laughs> you just have to be their friend, yep. you and know? Yeah, it reminds, so two, I think it reminds me of two things. One is something our coworker, Jake Newby, once said that's always stuck with me, mm -hmm. that uh, as a marketer, as any marketer, whether you're an affiliate marketer, you're in brand marketing or whatever it is, the most important thing to remember, the number one secret, the most essential thing is to remember that there's a person on the other end of your marketing. 100%. You know, we get so caught up in the perfect copy, the perfect creative, the perfect post. But really, it's just like there's there's a person who's going to consume that. Mm -hmm. And first and foremost, it has to speak to that person. And then the second part of that that you mentioned is if you've got that strong personal connection and you've built that strong following or audience, promoting the right thing, like you yes. said, in the niche, like... Yes. You know, I think um, one example we've talked about is if you've got a really great health and fitness audience, but suddenly you're promoting um, a crypto, you know, <laughs> ebook, <Yeah. laughs> um, it's not going to go as well. It's not going to land. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's okay, but that's just understanding. Again, that's diving deeper into what affiliate marketing is and understanding who your audience and your niche is. And if you can target that, you don't need a large audience. Whether you're doing organic or paid yep. promotion, you don't need a large audience. You just need to know who you're speaking to. Oh, yes, that's it. Okay, that's another myth. Do you need a large audience? Busted. busted. With that myth busted, let's move on to myth number three. Affiliate marketing deteriorates content quality. Okay, I can totally see where people might think this is true, especially mm -hmm. if you see the gurus online who are just spamming you with constant content yes. of buy my product, buy my product. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a really tasteful way to do that. And you might find that it actually benefits your brand. Like we talked about earlier, if you're solving a problem for someone and you're not spamming your audience, yep. there's nothing deteriorating about the quality of your content. It's actually bringing more value to them. Yes. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I like, um, in, actually, so in both cases. So in the case of the affiliate, mm -hmm. you know, if you are the content creator who you're marketing to your audience, um, you know, you're promoting to your audience, or even you're running paid, like in either case, you have the power to choose what you want to promote, mm -hmm. right? And so, yeah, I think it's a very well-founded and important worry because it acts as a guideline or, you know, a little bit of a boundary. Mm -hmm. And if you've got a red flag or a warning thing flashing that says, you know, this is the wrong product for me to promote, don't promote it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I do think it's a really important concern, a valid concern to have. But to your point, done well by choosing the right product, uh, by promoting it in an authentic and helpful way, to your mm -hmm. point, a value additive way to your audience. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have no. to be scammy or bombastic or bombarding people no. or any of that. I think, too, there's a there's a layer of transparency or a level of transparency that your audience will appreciate as well, especially in the organic content realm. If I'm, again, like we talked about, if I'm constantly posting, buy this product, buy this product, a, your audience is going to be exhausted and right. they're going to be like, maybe actually I shouldn't buy this I product. Buy that. But if you're transparent, and you're like, hey, listen, I'm an affiliate for these people, but I like them. You know, I like this yep. brand. This is the value it's brought to me. If you bring that level of transparency, I think it actually, like I said, it's going to it's going to pump up that value, yeah. actually. Yeah. It can even strengthen the connection yes. by basically acknowledging like. This is either a problem I've had in the past or something I've wanted to learn in the past. And, and here's what's helped me. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I get it too. Um, so on, that's, all, I think, all on the affiliate side. And then I also, we hear this sometimes on the product owner or the brand side. Mm -hmm. So you've got, um, using you know, supplements uh, as an example, let's say you've got a supplement company owner and they're worried about engaging with performance affiliates, um, whether it's like paid media guys or content creators because they don't want their brand to get diluted. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of go back to the same thing, like as the brand owner or product owner, they have the ability to set the boundaries and limits, like the affiliate guidelines, terms and conditions on what to do and what not to do. So I think sometimes we hear this from the product owner and it's as simple as basically laying out in a transparent and clear way so your affiliates know how to operate, mm -hmm. uh, what you're okay with. And the example that you used is the affiliate. Are you okay with, you know, establishing a meaningful connection with your audience and mm -hmm. talking about the mm -hmm. product in an authentic way? It's going to be okay 100% of the time. Are you okay with, you know, spam links and YouTube comments? Mm -hmm. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I do think on both sides, it's a good worry to have in mind, but not so much as like a, as something to, to fear, but just as a way to help guide how you want to, you know, engage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, at the end of the day, we can bust this myth. Not only does it not deteriorate your content, but it actually brings a lot of value if you do it the right way. Yep. Yep. And for the brand owners, it can do the same thing. It can enhance brand awareness, mm -hmm. can have people talking about your product in new and interesting ways, um, and definitely does not have to be aggressive or spammy or any of that. No. That's a myth busted. Busted. So, Chris, the next myth is that when you're an affiliate, you don't have any control over what you're promoting. Oh, yeah, definitely. And we've talked about this a bit already. Yeah. This one I think you can squarely put in the myth bucket because mm -hmm. one of the first things you should do as an affiliate is choose, you know, from the available range of products to promote, the one you're most comfortable promoting the one that either most aligns with your own values or your own audience, you basically, you know, from the get go have control over saying, 
Uh, this is what I'd like to promote and test. Um, these are things I don't want to. And ultimately what you might find is that the first product you choose, uh, even if that's not the most successful, it's okay to iterate and it's okay to experiment with what works. But at the end of the day, you've got control over that selection. Nobody's going to force you, you know, to engage or promote a product you don't want to. In my experience, I am a yoga instructor and an outdoor in Influencer, for lack of a better yeah. term, yeah, and fitfluencer, yeah, something like that, maybe. There's some fluence in there. <laughs> I'm a fluence of some kind. Yep. It's my you're fluencing, <laughs> <laughs> and you're not going to see me promoting as an affiliate a link, like you said, to a crypto, right? You know how to be a crypto billionaire. Billionaire. Mm -hmm. That's not going to land with my audience. Right. They want yoga mats and outdoor gear. Mm -hmm. They don't care about crypto. So again, as an affiliate, like you said, this is landing squarely in the myth busted category yep. because you have entire control over what you're promoting. Yeah. And once you've decided on your niche and who your audience is, you get to pick every single product that you promote. Yep. And so, yeah, with your kind of influencer experience too, I think you know that sometimes um, as an influencer or especially if you just want to sign up for an influencer platform, you might sometimes get asked as an influencer to do sponsored posts for stuff that you don't necessarily right, mm -hmm. believe in or want to promote. Mm -hmm. That's the, I think the nice thing about um, this sort of affiliate marketing, performance affiliate marketing, is you really drive the ship. Uh, you get to choose you know, the product that you want to promote. Mm -hmm. um, you're not going to kind of uh, get in an uncomfortable situation in the same way where it's like, oh, do I click Ooh, yes or you know, yeah, no to this? Yeah. That's one of the first things you get to do is choose mm -hmm. what you want to promote. And if you're in the paid space, you get to choose what you want to promote based off of like really great conversion rates and mm -hmm. traffic and clicks. And, you know, you get to make those selections so you can earn the most money and have the best return on your investment in a paid space as well. Yes. Yeah. And that's one of the, I think, coolest things about this kind of performance affiliate marketing that at first can seem intimidating. Like, is it, um, it seems simpler, easier, I think, to think about, oh, if I do a post about X, I'll get a hundred bucks and it's sort of a sponsored post and mm -hmm. it's, it's a done deal. Um, there is a certain simplicity and like elegance to that. But the cool thing about this kind of performance affiliate marketing is, as you get more comfortable with it, to your point, all of the stats on what you can earn are available for you to sort of like nitpick and yep. browse. And you can begin to see like, oh, the conversion rate on, on this product is, you know, X versus Y, mm -hmm. earnings per click, average order value, all this really cool data that lets you have um, like your hands on the controls a little bit yes. and helps you actually, you can turn the dials and yes. it makes it easier and more fun to like test and optimize and see how far you can go. Yeah, you're pulling the lever. You're yeah. in full control here. Yep. So that's a myth very squarely. Busted. Busted. Our fifth and final myth of today, mm -hmm. there may be more in the future, is that only certain niches or product categories mm -hmm. in affiliate marketing can be successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a really interesting one. And full transparency, there are niches that perform better than others. There's no doubt about that, mm -hmm. right? But, I mean, we go back to our example of as a quote-unquote fit fluencer, yep. I'm not going to be promoting crypto just because crypto converts really well right? because that's not going to land and that's not my niche. And although that's a really popular and really well converting niche, yep. that's not going to land with my audience. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's such a good point. So that's one of those um, cases where the broader statistics can like inform your decision making, but shouldn't be the sole dictator of your decision making. Because yes. you might see, yeah, that's your point. Um, supplements right now, health and fitness, maybe blood sugar control mm -hmm. uh, is an incredibly popular niche or product category. But yeah, if you are uh, selling, you know, a cryptocurrency ebook or ebiz or something, it's not necessarily going to align with your audience. So even though it might seem very tempting, mm -hmm. um, or maybe worth a, you know, small test to try and play in that supplement space, ultimately, like you've kind of got to find the stats that most closely align with what you do mm -hmm. and what you promote and remind yourself that these are all averages um, mm -hmm. and that your own performance, your own success in that niche might be very different than the average if it closely matches your audience. Right. And it doesn't mean you're not going to be successful in your niche mm -hmm. either. Right. It's not a determining factor of if you're in the health and beauty niche, you're not going to see any money. Yeah. You're still going to see money. You're still going to see payout. It just isn't comparable. Yep. And, but that's okay. 
Yeah, totally. And it does come back to kind of one of those early questions around what sort of affiliate are you? Um, you know, when you look at the ClickBank marketplace or you view some of our content around like top offers and things like that, mm -hmm. um, those are geared, I think, largely toward affiliates who can, you know, maybe they run paid so they can sort of target certain traffic, yeah. right? And they can run different offers um, based on the traffic that they're targeting, mm -hmm. which is a little bit different if, you know, you're a content creator or someone with a really strong, authentic following, then I kind of think you try to do the reverse. You find the best product that matches the audience. 100%. Uh, and it's probably going to out-convert or outperform the averages because you've got a really strong, warm, trusted traffic source. Exactly. You don't want to put yourself in a box just because a certain niche averaging is averaging better than another one, right? It's, yep. It might be performing better than your niche, but you're putting yourself in a box then, and then you're like, well, I can only promote this yeah. to my audience. And you're letting that product drive who you're speaking to as opposed to the opposite. The reverse. Right. Totally. And I will say, yeah, if um, there's one thing I'd recommend is, is always to stay up to date on the research, on the top performing niches, just so you're aware of the broader conversation mm -hmm. and trends and, and what's doing well and selling well. Um, I think that's always a good practice as an affiliate. And we've got you know, top offers, content and stuff like that. We produce all the time um, to, to help with that, yep. just so that you always make the best choice for for your business or for your side hustle or your brand. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, we can look at it. We can say, yes, certain niches are more successful, but there's not niches that are only successful. Yep. So that's another myth. And not one size fits all. Oh, not sorry. Not one size fits all at all. Now go so for fun. it. And that's our last myth. Busted. Busted. Chris, thanks so much for joining us as we break down some of our affiliate marketing myths. Keely, thank you for having me. This has been so much fun. Oh, I've, uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed my time on ClickBank affiliate marketing myth busters. It's been a blast. It has been a blast. And if you guys want to learn more about different affiliate marketing niches and the top 10 performing niches for 2024, you can check that out on our channel here. And I would say if there are other myths you're curious about, you want to learn more cold hard truths, see other myths busted, please let us know in the comments below. We love your feedback, value your feedback. We would happily take some questions so that we can fold this in to yes. the next round. Yes, please. And thank you guys so much. We'll see you next time.